Hello, welcome to A Gut Feeling, where we talk about all things relating to the gut. My name is Janine. I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, and this is my story. So a lot of my teenage life and early married life, I really struggled with constipation and a lot of gut pain, but I learned how to manage the symptoms and just learned how to live with it. Now, I wouldn't describe my diet as the standard American diet, although I did do a lot of cheating, but the kind of diet that I tried to eat say 70% of the time. I wouldn't eat a lot of starches, potatoes, corn, that type of thing. I tried to stay away from sugar. And my whole plan was basically more of a low carb diet, not a lot of gluten and so on. Now granted, probably 30% or sometimes more if I felt like binge eating, I would uh, binge out on junk food. When we go out to eat, I just ate kind of whatever I wanted to. And so I didn't have the healthiest of diets, but neither was I just always eating chips and pizza and that kind of thing. I would say my diet at home was fairly healthy. And so that just kind of gives you an idea of what kind of diet I had before I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. So I got married in the year of 2012 and my stomach pain started definitely getting worse. And five years later, in March of 2017, our son was born. Things seemed to be okay, but a few months later in like, I think it was around June, I started noticing blood in my stool. And at first it wasn't major, I wasn't too concerned, but I just couldn't quite get it out of my mind. Uh, we were starting to get a little bit worried about colon cancer and so on. So I went and did some testing, you know, all the usual hemorrhoids and um, that came back clear, tell you those tests are not fun. So this started to get worse. I started to have, um, be running to the bathroom a little bit more often. We went to did more testing for like bacteria and infection and that kind of thing. And later looking back, I'm very disappointed with the lab that we went to. All the tests came back clear, but I actually did have an infection, which I'll get to later. But things just kept getting worse and worse. And by the end of August, beginning of September, I was really bad. I was just stuck at home. I was just running to the bathroom nonstop. It's just 20, 30 times a day. I was bleeding a lot. Diarrhea was just terrible. So I finally got an appointment set up at a gastrologist. I'm probably butchering the name. Anyway, and of course you go in, then you have to set up another appointment for colonoscopy, and usually they're booked out in advance for a little while. So it took me a few weeks till I could get in for that appointment. And it was just some of the worst weeks of my life. I just, I was just existing. I didn't know what was going on with me. So I went in and um, I never thought that at the age of 28, I'd have to do a colonoscopy. I always thought that was for older people, but Lo and behold, I had to go take one. Uh, the results came back that I had ulcerative colitis and it was a severe case. They did additional testing and I came back with an, uh, results that I had C. diff infection, which is a horrible infection to have and it's something that's really hard to get rid of. I was actually fortunate I was able to get rid of it with one round of antibiotics. I know some people it keeps coming back and I know that possibility is still for me, but so far it's been away. Um, they put me on vancomycin, I think it was two weeks, and then I had to do more testing um, to make sure that was gone before I could be treated for ulcerative colitis. And so as per normal, they put me on prednisone and um, also on, and I'm going to butcher this name, um, mazalmaline tablets. Uh, Aprizo was the kind that I was going to be on. It's an anti-inflammatory drug. It's a delayed release pill that goes through your digestive system into your colon where it opens up and like sprinkles these little anti-inflammatory granules throughout your colon. I did start immediately feeling better with the prednisone as it usually works, um, but my, my flare never actually really went away. It subsided, but I was still bleeding. I still had urgency, but I was able to live a somewhat normal life. And finally, the beginning of 2018, I decided, you know what, after the holidays, I'm going to jump into a diet that's pretty strict. And at the time, I was interested in gap diet, which is an incredible diet if any of you are interested. I'll probably talk more about it later. But I jumped into this diet and I actually didn't stay on it very long. I don't know if it was two or three weeks. That pulled me out of the flare and I'm forgetting when I tapered off prednisone, if I had tapered off of it already prior or if I was still tapering off. But um, it pulled me out of the flare and I was doing wonderful. Life was good. I'm like, wow, I'm back on track. You know, I'm never going to have a flare again. Ha ha ha. It went until... Uh, July of that year. So from probably about January, February until July, I didn't have any major symptoms. I tried to eat a fairly good diet, but I wasn't being just super careful. And throughout this time, I was like, you know what? I don't think I need meds. You know, I was diagnosed with C. diff, which was probably making this all worse. I bet I could get off my meds. And so I started tapering off. And I think by June, I was completely off meds. And two weeks after I was completely off meds, I went and ate chocolate with peanuts in it. Now, peanuts are a trigger food for me. I don't know why I thought I could take them. And I ate it and it just threw me immediately into a flare. When you see that blood and that urgency hits you again and suddenly 
you're back to square one. It's one of the worst, most devastating feelings. This was probably one of the worst flares I had as far as the mental game. I just really struggled with depression. It affected relationships. The flare lasted quite a while. So the flare started in July and it went on until probably January, February of the following year. And once again, eventually I went back on prednisone. That actually did it help knock it back a little bit, but it didn't help me get completely off of it. And so the battle just went on. I was trying various diets. I would hop from diet to diet. I would do these fasts and long fasts, like multiple days at a time. And one time, I think the longest I ever did was uh, eight days. And my fast mostly consisted of water and bone broth, but I'm sort of an undisciplined person. I would get to the end of these fasts and I I just couldn't discipline myself to eat slowly enough when I got back into it because I was so ravenously hungry. I would eat a little bit, wait a few hours, eat a little bit more, and sometimes I wasn't even that good. And so it would just, I think, wreck my stomach even worse than what it was when I started. And so I tried stuff like that. I would try uh, bone broth fast. I would try bone broth diet. I'd try, you know, carnivore diets and you name it, all kinds of things. And just nothing seemed to really work. And so it's just super discouraging being a mom, having this illness, trying to take care of your family, trying to live a normal life when everything is just turned upside down. Jumping into this year now, that took me into, the flare took me into like January, February of this year, which is 2019. I can't remember the exact details, but I went, I think, on a similar diet again, similar to GAPS, um, where I got really strict and uh, did a few things and somehow I just miraculously pulled out of my flare and I thought in my mind all right I'm finally out of this flare surely the meds will keep me out of a flare now I'm not going to go off meds I was determined not to go off medicine so and I went back to sort of a normal lifestyle of eating and then once again we're probably around February till May I was pretty much okay and then uh, lo and behold I just was not being careful I was just thinking you know what I'm fine and I had a couple weeks where I was eating so much fast food, so much junk food. And then following that, I had a super stressful day where my levels of stress were just whew, through the roof. Before that day happened, I was thinking to myself, you know what, Janine, you probably shouldn't go through with this day, but I did anyway. And at the end of that day, we were traveling home and um, we had to stop at a truck stop. And suddenly it just hit me out of the blue, urgency and stuff to the point I could hardly hold it in and I had to be running to the bathroom um my son was in the car my my husband was in the truck stop and I saw him through the doorway and I just left my son in the car and went flying into the truck stop and I told him get back out to the car with um, our son I have to go to the bathroom and I saw blood again lots of blood and I just remember I just wanted to just give up in discouragement it's just the most depressing thing when you think you're out of a flare and you go back into another one and so that leads me to today uh, from May of this year 2019 this is currently October I have been in another flare so ever since I have been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis most of that time has been in an active flare um, sometimes this the severity isn't quite as bad as other times but um, yeah that pretty much sums up my story so I was desperate and I kept trying things. I kept hoping, you know what, I'm going to find an answer one of these days. And I would do so much research, so much study. I would, you know, I would try this and try that and try the other thing. And I, I'm beginning to see some of my problem was I tried too many things. I didn't try something long enough. And I'm going to talk about this in another video. But the mental game with ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, whatever um, gut issues you have, is probably one of the hardest things to overcome because you struggle with depression, anxiety, and just it's just really hard to deal with. And just sticking to a plan where your guts are just ripping you apart is just really hard to do, especially when you seem to get worse after you start a plan. But I'm going to be talking more about that in another video. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and uh, the one coming up. But anyway, so I was just desperate and my conditions were just getting worse and worse with this last flare. So finally, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to just take stronger medicines or whatever. I'm going to go see my doctor. And I went to my doctor and my options were bleak. She said, look, you know, a prezo, it doesn't seem to be working and I don't think diet's going to be working for you either. And she, she gave me a few options. She said, there's a test group that's doing um, a drug test study where I would be part of a test group where I would possibly taking um, a placebo pill or the actual drug. And I could not get pregnant on this drug. It was a test drug. I could never get pregnant if I was on it. And so that to me looked like bleak. And I'm like, well, I really want to get pregnant again. So why would I go on a drug that even if it pulls me into remission, um, 
what would I do after that? Like if I want to get pregnant, I have to get off that drug and try something else. And my other options would have been these really expensive infusions where you pay, you know, five to $10,000 per month or every six weeks or whatever it is, you have to go in for infusions. And these are like a chemo type drug. And I just wanted nothing to do with it, but it was kind of an option for getting pregnant, which is surprising to me. And then there's immune immunosuppressant pills that aren't really recommended for pregnancy either. And she just kept saying, I, I think maybe you should consider surgery where I get my colon removed. And I was like, there's just no way. Like I have to be in bed almost dying before um, I'm ready to take that step. So I left the doctor's office super discouraged. She had given me another um, prescription for prednisone. I was thinking that if I couldn't get things straightened out that I would eventually um, jump back on prednisone, see if I could pull out of a flare that way and then be more strict with diet to stay out of it. But I just could never quite bring myself to take that step. I hate prednisone. It makes you fat and makes your face blow up and you can't sleep well at night. And sometimes it doesn't even seem to completely help pull you out of a flare. So I was trying to avoid it at all costs because it's not good for you at all. But I did have this bottle for backup. It just kind of gave me comfort knowing that it was there, but I just knew that it was not an answer. And I kept desperately searching for um, something to do, some diet to follow that I had confidence in. And there was a couple that I found and I was starting to form sort of a plan, some things that I just felt like I could throw my heart into and some of the theories and reasonings behind certain diets and certain food groups and how they affect you and your gut really resonated with me and made sense. And so I started kind of formulating a plan. I tried a few things that didn't seem to work as well. But through it all, it kind of led me back to this one diet. But before we jump into that, I actually made a huge decision and decided to go off all my meds. The side effects for the stuff that I was taking were all the symptoms that ulcerative colitis has. You know, bleeding, cramping. Um, and so I'm like, well, how do I know if the pill is causing more of this um, or if it's my ulcerative colitis? And I was scared. It's scary to go off pills. It really is. It took me like before this, I, I wouldn't even have considered it. And I actually felt better for a little bit afterwards I got off of them. So now I was committed to going completely natural. I knew that it was going to take ever so much more than just meds and just a kind of, I'll try this diet until I get out of my flare type of mentality. I knew that I had to commit. And that is something that is really hard for me because this entire time my mentality was, let's get me out of this flare so I can get back to my life. That mind shift, it took a while to get there because these diets are extremely difficult to follow, especially when you enjoy eating out and enjoy food as much as I do. But once my mind was made up and I feel like God gave me extra strength, I was able to actually dig into a diet and stick with it longer than I had for any previous diets. So there are two diet plans that are extremely similar. One is called GAPS and the other is called the Specific Carbohydrate Diet. GAPS was actually built off of the Specific Carbohydrate Diet and it's a really good protocol. However, GAPS was always super overwhelming to me. It was just very detailed and studying into it, the diets are very similar, but yet the Specific Carbohydrate Diet or what's referred to as the SCD diet actually didn't seem quite as overwhelming to me. And so I decided I'm gonna follow that one and if it works, that's what I'm gonna be sticking to. And I jumped into it and within about a week, I actually started noticing improvements I was just so excited because I went from running to the bathroom all the time, extreme urgency, lots of blood and mucus, um, watery, diarrhea, can hardly get to the bathroom in time, to actually form bowel movements, which if you have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's and you get to this point, it's like a victory beyond anything. My urgency was decreasing, the cramping and the pain wasn't there nearly as much, and I wasn't running to the bathroom nearly as much. Like, um, my bathroom trips actually went down to almost normal, like three times, four times a day, which isn't too bad, and sometimes only maybe twice a day. And so, this was just huge, but I was still bleeding and I still am. So I've been on this diet for about three weeks now, and I've just been super happy with it. It's something that I feel I can stick to. Because of the food it allows, it feels a little bit more sustainable. I will be jumping into the diet a lot more in this channel. This one seemed to be what would work for me and the amount of people that have testimonies for getting relief, whether they have ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, celiac disease, and many of these others, is because of this diet. And once again, I'll be diving into it a little bit more, telling you guys where you can find the book and so on. But this is a diet that I chose and so far I'm really happy with it. Uh, my next goal is to try to get the bleeding to stop, to completely pull out of this flare so that I can start introducing um, a lot more foods into the diet. Right now I'm not eating a whole lot. I just have a handful of items that I can eat. 
But feeling good and to be able to actually leave the house without being anxious about bathrooms is a huge plus and it makes the effort so worth it. Anyway, so that's my story. And if you want to see my progress or lack thereof, then please subscribe and hit the little bell button so you get notified whenever I release new videos. And I wish you the best with your healing journey and whatever illnesses you're facing because being sick is tough. And when you don't feel well, it just affects every part of your life. And so hugs to you and I hope you feel better and I hope you can find answers. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next video.